Spiritual Anarchy is the title of our message taken from Judges chapter 17 and verses 1 to 13. And there are two thoughts, in the home, verse 1 to 6, and from the home, verse 7 to 13. This scene opens with a young Levite leaving his home in Bethlehem, Judah, seeking a better situation for himself. In due course, he comes to Micah's house. The Levites are to be serving in the work of the tabernacle and in the teaching of the Word of God. Instead, the entire system has broken down so that the Levites and the priests were no longer the dispenser of God's Word and His holy will for the people of God. We see here in chapter 17, the scene of a family making their own concoction of worship, making idols that pleased them, and doing that which was right in their own sight. In verse 6 of our text we read, In those days there was no king in Israel, but every man did that which was right in his own eyes. These were the days when they have drifted so far away, spiritually speaking, since the days of Moses and Joshua, when God's word is the indispensable guide to every aspect of life. Yeah, you remember we are studying the law of God on Sunday, and you realize that the law of God is so detailed, and it uh, teaches every aspect of our daily life and uh, when the people of God are instructed and they understand then there is a way forward for the people of God that uh, their life uh, will not uh, go into great chaos anarchy and destruction you recall when God gave Israel the land. Uh, these are the words that Moses gave to Joshua. Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mightest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage? Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Biblical concerns when God's people fail to know God's word. Judges 17 verse 6 is one example of the times of the judges when every man did that which was right in their own eyes. And the prophet Hosea, during the time of the divided kingdom, also said, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. In the wilderness, the tabernacle of system of sacrifice and worship was set up. So we're going to spend time in the study of the uh, book of Exodus on Sunday, whereby we took time to understand the laws that God gave to His people and to take time to understand the system of worship, of sacrifice that God will set up in the wilderness, the tabernacle worship, whereby the nine the 12 tribes will surround the tabernacle and looking in, they see the presence of God, the cloud by day 
and the fire that was by night. And they understood and know that their sustenance comes from God and God's word would be given to them when they were parked at Mount Sinai and, uh, so that they would be prepared. When they would inherit the land, they would know what to do. So in the wilderness, the tabernacle system of sacrifice, worship was set up with the dividing of the inheritance. There seemed to be a drifting apart in their faith. The inroad of idolatry in unequal yoke marriages outside of God's covenant family and compromise in the faith. You remember when we had our family day in 2019, some of you were there. Uh, How to study the Bible was the topic that we were speaking about. And we had these questions that were asked. We, We said, how much time per day do you spend on personal Bible study? You may include your quiet time as well, I said. May I ask a more probing question? How much devotion do you spend on personal Bible study? Right? It's not just a hate knowledge, but here we are speaking about really understanding what the Word of God says and having a conviction to, to know how we can order our life. Do you think it is helping your spiritual growth if, you're, if your Bible study uh, effectual, effective, are you growing in the, in the Lord? And so we come to this question, why study the Bible? Do you think you are living as Israel did during the time of the judges and during the time of the divided kingdom? Right? The Word of God tells us that in the last days, right, we recognize that these are uh, those uh, same times of spiritual anarchy. 2 Timothy 3, verse 1 to 5 says, This know also, that in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of that, those that are good, traitors, hady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. So here you see and you would notice uh, how uh, there is uh, in Israel uh, that, that form of godliness, isn't it? Uh, as, you, as we will study the text in, of Micah and the family, how can we make a difference in these last days of wantonness in the world around us? How do we live godly lives? The question that, that comes to our mind, isn't it? It begins with the knowing the ways of godliness and departing from evil. Proverbs 3 verse 7 says, Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. How do we do that? Well, it is by studying God's only revelation to us, the Bible. Now, what happened in the situation in Judges chapter 17? Uh, The scene opens in a hill country of Ephraim in a certain home. There was a man, Micah, and his mother who set up an idol shrine. Verse 1 of our text says, There was a man of Mount Ephraim whose name was Micah, And he said unto his mother, The eleven hundred shekels of silver that were taken from thee, about which thou cursest and speakest also in my years, behold, the silver is with me. I took it. So mother lost money. Suddenly, where she was safekeeping uh, her, uh, well, how she earned it, we are not told, uh, but she had uh, a large sum of money that was kept with her and this money was stolen and of course she was very upset and she began cursing the culprit and the son was the one who took it and it's very interesting that you see the response of the mother towards the son verse 3 and he restored uh, verse 2 at the end and his mother said blessed be thou of the Lord my son well there was no rebuke. Uh, There was no uh, 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 
anger, curse that was supposed to have uh, emanated from her mouth initially. Uh, what is happening here? And when he had restored the 1,100 shekels of silver to his mother, his mother said, I had wholly dedicated the silver unto the Lord from my hand for my son to make a graven image and a molten image. Now, therefore, I will restore it unto thee. The story is a little bit uh, funny, unusual. Uh, yet he restored the money unto his mother, and his mother took 200 shekels of silver and gave them to the founder, who made thereof a graven image and a molten image, and they were in the house of Micah. And the man Micah had a house of gods and made an ephod, a teraphim, and consecrated one of his sons who became the priest. So here, there's this 11 pieces of, 1100 pieces of silver stolen from the mother. She cursed the thief, not knowing that it was a son. Michael hears the curse and tells the mother he, he took the money and returned it to her. And the mother blessed her. And when Michael returns the money, the mother dedicates it to the Lord to make an idol for him. There was no teaching. Uh, it's as if to see, to understand that if you have an idol in the house, then you are blessed. Right? Uh, you have a form of God in your heart or in your hands that you can go to and you'll be blessed. And you, you, don't need, you don't need to do what is right in the sight of God. Right? And that's a form of religion. Uh, we have our own idols in our lives. And these idols in our life uh, becomes our, uh, 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 well, charts our direction, charts our direction. So she takes 200 of the 1100 pieces of silver, who uses them to make idols and finish, and the finished product to Michael who had his shrine. And the, the thief owns up for his wrongdoing. Stolen money is returned, mother and son reconciled, curse turned into blessing, gift received, and the plans of both the mother and son succeed. But at this time, right, you see that something very irregular, right, the woman consecrates the money to the Lord and made an idol with it. How to consecrate to the Lord and you make an idol to worship? Right? It's a very uh, uh, very strange situation in Israel. Uh, God has always taught them in the commandments not to make any graven image. But why were they making graven images? Right? They were transgressing the commandment of God and it's as if they, they, have, they have no qualms in that. They, either they don't know, right? they don't understand, or they just simply reject God's ways. And so, uh, you see here... Uh, the scene opens to us and, and uh, the situation uh, where how the, the father and uh, the, the mother and the, and the son is reconciled uh, through the making of a new set of idols. Uh, so here you see that in the home uh, there was spiritual uh, anarchy. Uh, there was no understanding of the laws of God. Uh, s stealing is nothing, making an idol is nothing. And so, <clears throat> religion began in the home. There was no teaching, and what was right in their own eyes, they did. And not only in the home, but from the home. Right? You realize that uh, this is the situation in our modern families, isn't it? Right? Uh, our idol is perhaps... Uh, those things that we hold dear to in our lives. And not only for us in Singapore, we say that our education is our idol. Right? We say that our own uh, 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 material progress in this world is our idol. These are the things that, uh, that, that emanates from the home. These are the things that drives us. Right? Not, not, not God's word, not the church, uh, not anything that... Uh, the, the Word of God teaches us, we do what we like. It's according to what we like. 
And that's the spiritual anarchy, the state that, that, that we are in now, in the church, in our church. Right? And it's sad, but this is the situation. It opens up in this way, and we thank God that we have God's Word to help us to see, to learn, so that the people of God may understand and know right, we may not be aware of it. Right? That has been our way of life. We have been taught this way. We have been uh, nurtured this way. Or that's what we think. Well, that's how the world molds us. And we are made in that mold. And we find ourselves in great difficulty to get out of that mold. And, and so you see from verse 7 to verse 13, uh, the scene opens with a young Levite out of Bethlehem, Judah, who came to the home and this Bethlehem, uh, Judah, Levite, was hired uh, to be a house priest. But I have money, <laughs> so I, I can give a little money, and he's poor, he needs help. Right? You give it to him, and he will, he will become your priest, and you tell him what to do. Right? That's, how, uh, that's how it is, and it's a sad thing, isn't it? Uh, when the world encroaches, into the church of Jesus Christ and men and women use money in order to drive their own agenda in the church and that's sad and well but that is the reality that is what's happening but this must not be and this must be stopped and this must uh, not continue right, so that uh, there is there is a, a way out right, to restore the sanctity of the families in the church so this scene opens with a young Levite uh, coming and our text tells us, and the man departed out of the city from Bethlehem, Judah to sojourn where he could find a place and he came to Mount Ephraim to the house of Micah as he journeyed. And Micah said unto him, Whence cometh thou? And he said unto him, I am a Levite of Bethlehem, Judah and I go to sojourn where I find a place. And Micah said unto him, Dwell with me and be unto me a father and a priest, and I will give thee ten shekels of silver by the year and a suit of apparel and thy victuals. So the Levite went in. Oh, that is how it becomes, religion becomes a transaction. Right? I give my money, so I get a little bit of religion that I think would satisfy my heart to think that I'm religious, that I'm following God. But in fact, that's... Uh, that's far from it, isn't it? There's no true, proper consecration of the heart. And verse 10, And Micah said to him, Dwell with me, and be with me a father and a priest, and I will give thee ten shekels of silver by the year, a suit of apparel, thy pictures. So the Levites went in. And this was what happened in Israel. Right? What happened was that there was a lot of spiritual, religious compromise. Right? And... Uh, uh, we said this morning uh, that, uh, you know, uh, during the, that time, uh, before Israel entered the promised land, there was the mixing of marriage with the Moabites. And that mixing was fatal. Right? God had to uh, uh, send a plague. And, you know, the, there was a man, Phinehas, who had to go and simply take out the evil in Israel. Take out the evil. They have to be removed. No, no choice. Right? They become poisoned. They become poisoned. And the more it, it, it infects, and it, it becomes so infectious amongst... amongst uh, and this is what happened. And that infection is causing a great cancer right? and, and death at the end. And so the Levite... I can't believe his good luck and accepts the offer uh, at once. And Michael ordains him uh, and he moves in and takes up his duties. And it was uh, very business-like. Everything seems straightforward and above board. The interests of the parties happily coincide and they arrive at a, an arrangement that suits them. Well, what we, the world would call a win-win situation. I, I arrange what is right in my own sight. I do what is right in my own sight. I don't need the law of God. 
I can do what I want. It doesn't suit me. No one can stop me. If I don't come to this church, I go to another church. And better still, after the last two years, I can stay at home and uh, uh, watch and do what I want. I don't like it. It's fine. I don't need the fellowship. I don't need people to tell me what's wrong. Uh, I'm happy. I can exist on my own. I have that, that, that capacity to order my own lives, and I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable because I have the, uh, that opportunity to see, wow, look, look, I can, I can uh, switch channels and, and learn from every single pastor in every single church that I think is good. But why does God put one in the local church? And why? Because you know, it is in the local church that there is a personal understanding of what's going on in the person's life. And if not, it becomes so chaotic, isn't it? And I believe that the last past two years, well, religion has become a religion of convenience. And I pray that the church uh, would not carry on this way. The family would dictate not God's word. They would do what they want. Uh, the agenda is not according to God's word, God's plan, how the church would move forward, but according to what I plan, what I think uh, is right in my own sight. And that's very sad, not the law of God, but what's good for themselves. Is that true religion? It's not. And it's very sad to observe this. Truly, we need to go back to God's word and abide in His word. May the Lord be merciful to help us. Let us pray. Father, we thank Thee for Thy word. Strengthen us for Thy own mercy's sake and grant us a, a, a heart of repentance to come back to Thee. This I pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen.